This is Wrestling's Greatest Moments. Hey now, wrestling fans. It's time for another episode of Wrestling's Greatest Moments, Who's That Wrestler? Where we provide five clues and you have to guess the wrestler's identity. The less clues you need to get the answer, the better your score. Before we get started though, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit that notification bell. Here are the rules. You have five clues to guess each wrestler's identity. That is, the wrestling name they're best known by. This week, we're adding a picture clue. You'll get a picture of a wrestler that is blurred out. As the clues progress, you'll see more of the wrestler, which will hopefully give you a better idea of the wrestler's identity. Keep in mind that as the categories get more challenging, the picture clues will also be more challenging. For example, you may get a picture of a wrestler after a hair versus hair match that makes it more difficult to guess their identity. As always, if you answer the question with the first clue, you get five points. If you answer the question by the second clue, you get four points, and so on, with the fifth and last clue being worth one point. If you don't answer the question within five clues, you get a whole lot of nothing. Dare to play the wild card? If you're willing to take a risk, consider playing our wild card question. We'll give you the subject. The question could be easy, medium, or hard. You won't know until you play it. It's a multiple choice, or as we used to say in school, multiple guess. Answer it right, and you add five points to your score. Answer it wrong, and you deduct five points. Remember, the wild card is optional. Here's an example. Category, the Road Warriors. Your difficulty is easy. Lucky you. Question, which of these tag team titles weren't held by the Road Warriors? One, the AWA World Tag Team Championship. Two, the WWF Tag Team Championship. Three, the ECW Tag Team Championship. Four, the NWA World Tag Team Championship. The correct answer is three, the ECW Tag Team Championship. Good luck. Question one, easy. Clue number one, this wrestler was born on March 29th, 1959 in Pensacola, Florida. Although he had singles and tag team success, He's best known for being part of, of a famous wrestling trio. Clue number two. This wrestler was known for doing the moonwalk during matches. This wrestler and his teammates were known for their white hot feud against the Von Erichs. Clue number three. This wrestler teamed with Jimmy Garvin to capture the United States Tag Team Championship and WCW World Tag Team Championship. This wrestler and Garvin also held the WCW World Six-Man Tag Team Championship with Bad Street. Clue number four. This wrestler worked a historic dog collar match at the New Orleans Superdome in 1980 against the Junkyard Dog. The storyline driving this match was that this wrestler had blinded the Junkyard Dog. Clue number five. This wrestler sang his entrance theme, Bad Street USA. Who's that wrestler? Who is Michael P.S. Hayes? Question two. Easy. Clue number one. This wrestler was born on November 7th, 1955 in Woodbury, New Jersey. This wrestler was trained by Larry Sharp. This wrestler competed as Chris Canyon early on in his career. Clue number two. This wrestler's size and bulk led to announcer Gorilla Monsoon calling him the walking condominium. Clue number three. This wrestler demanded a five count from the referee when he pinned opponents. Clue number four. This wrestler battled WWF champion Hulk Hogan in a steel cage match at WrestleMania II. Clue number five. This wrestler's nickname was King Kong. Who's that wrestler? Who is King Kong Bundy? Question three. Medium. Clue number one. This wrestler was born on June 14th, 1959 in St. Petersburg, Florida. This wrestler began competing in the late 1970s. This wrestler competed in several southern territories early on in his career. 
including the Continental Wrestling Association, Championship Wrestling from Florida, and Georgia Championship Wrestling. Clue number two. This wrestler formed successful tag teams with Matt Bourne, capturing the Mid-Atlantic Tag Team Championship and the World Class Wrestling Association Tag Team Championship. This wrestler also found tag team success with his real-life brother, Brett. Clue number three. This wrestler was known for having one of the best power slams in the industry. Clue number four. This wrestler had a lengthy feud with Tommy Rich in Georgia Championship Wrestling. Clue number five. This wrestler competed in the historic steel cage match in Georgia Championship Wrestling dubbed The Last Battle of Atlanta. Who's that wrestler? Who is Buzz Sawyer? Question four. Medium. Clue number one. This wrestler was born on January 8th, 1948 in Vancouver, Washington. He served in Vietnam during the late 1960s. This wrestler was discovered by wrestler and promoter Sandy Barr. Clue number two. This wrestler initially competed as Bobby Main before adopting the name he was best known by. This wrestler teamed with Sterling Golden, a.k.a. future star Hulk Hogan, in Georgia Championship Wrestling. Clue number three. This wrestler feuded with Dusty Rhodes in Championship Wrestling from Florida. Clue number four. This wrestler used the nickname Hangman. Clue number five. This wrestler worked with Dutch Mantel in a tag team called the Kansas Jayhawks. Who's that wrestler? Who is Bobby Jaggers? Question five. Hard. Clue number one. This second generation wrestler was born on October 9th, 1964 in Charlotte, North Carolina. She was trained by Nelson Royal. Clue number two. This wrestler sang the national anthem at WrestleMania five. Clue number three. This wrestler was the first ever women's champion in Herb Abrams' Universal Wrestling Federation. Clue number four. This wrestler shares the same name as a song performed by Bobby Day and released in 1958. Clue number five. This wrestler is related to Jake Roberts and Sam Houston. Who's that wrestler? Who is Rockin' Robin? Question six, hard. Clue number one, this wrestler was born in Samoa on April 28th, 1949. He emigrated to New Zealand and debuted in pro wrestling around 1974 after training with future WWE Hall of Famer Peter Maivia and veteran wrestler, promoter, and trainer Steve Rickard. Clue number two. This wrestler captured his first championship in New Zealand, defeating Big John De Silva in a tournament to become New Zealand heavyweight champion. Interestingly, he lost the title to Steve Rickard. Clue number three. This wrestler captured several titles in Hawaii's 50th state big-time wrestling promotion, including the Hawaii National Heavyweight Championship, the NWA Pacific International Championship, and the NWA Polynesian Pacific Heavyweight Championship. Clue number four. This wrestler battled NWA World Champion Nature Boy Ric Flair to a double disqualification at a 1985 wrestling event in Honolulu, Hawaii, the Polynesian Hot Summer Night. Clue number five. This wrestler debuted in the WWF around 1986 and was promoted as Jimmy Superfly Snooka's cousin. He even received the nickname Superfly. Who's that wrestler? Who is C.V. Afi? Question 7. Ridiculous. Clue number 1. This wrestler was born in Greece on January 2nd, 1894, although even this wrestler was unsure of the exact date of his birth. He emigrated to the United States in 1909 and debuted as a professional wrestler in 1914 in California. Clue number two. This wrestler worked a methodical style 
but was known for drawing in fans. He reportedly drew 10,000 plus fans to 31 shows in 1931 and nearly 100,000 fans in Greece. Clue number three. This wrestler's charity work saw him honored around the world, including his receiving the Cross of the Golden Phoenix from the King of Greece. This wrestler was known for his armbar and the airplane spin. Clue number four. This wrestler worked a wildly successful match against Strangler Ed Lewis in 1934 at Chicago's Comiskey Park that drew a United States record of 35,265 fans and brought in $96,032 at the box office. This wrestler defeated Lewis. Clue number five. This wrestler held various versions of world titles in pro wrestling, including one win against Bronco Nagurski. This wrestler would hold this title until retiring in 1959. Short in stature, this wrestler was also known for his incredible physique, even later in life. Who's that wrestler? Who is Jim Londis? Dare to play the wild card? Remember, the wild card is optional. This week's wild card category, Kurt Hennig, a.k.a. Mr. Perfect. Difficulty, hard. Which of these titles was not held by Kurt Hennig in the AWA, American Wrestling Association? 1. The AWA World Heavyweight Championship. 2. The AWA World Tag Team Championship. 3. The AWA Americas Championship. 4. All of the above. The answer is 3. The AWA Americas Championship. Kurt Hennig held the AWA World Heavyweight Championship and the AWA World Tag Team Championship. However, he did not hold the AWA Americas Championship. Now it's time to add up your score. Let's have the coach tell you how you did. Coach? How'd you do? No points. You set up the ring. While you're at it, sweep up the gym. One to five points. You're a wrestling school student. Six to ten points. You're a local talent. Or what I like to call a bum. Eleven to fifteen points. You're a jobber to the stars. Sixteen to twenty points. You're a mid card talent. 21 to 25 points, you're an upper card talent. 26 to 30 points, you're a main eventer. 31 to 34 points, you're the undisputed world champion. 35 points, you're a living legend. While you're at it, subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell. Wrestling's Greatest Moments, the channel that celebrates the squared circle.